keeping well, being busy and taking care of yourselves, have you been doing any activities, talking to people or at least getting out? Have you actually created something or tried to create something? Perhaps challenged yourself or learnt anything new? Maybe participated in something or met new friends? Come to think of it, there's a place I often go but I have never really recorded basically what goes on there. Perhaps I have been enjoying myself so much that I've never had much of a chance to spread the good news about the Dragon Cafe. The Dragon Cafe is the Mental Fight Club's latest creative project. A relaxing cafe in an imaginative space open to all located in the crypt of the St. George the Martyr Church which is opposite Borough Tube Station. Now you can check out their site at dragoncafe.co.uk Now the Dragon Cafe provides a simple, affordable, healthy menu each week and a wide range of creative and well-being activities all of which are free and open to all except sort of for the food no ramen is required, just turn up and take part as much or as little as you like and usually I open from I believe Monday from 12 onwards um, in 2014 so anyway how how did my trip to the Dragon Cafe go on the 3rd of March 2014 well there was a lot of activities good food lots of creating and discussions that was on offer at the Dragon Cafe during that day although the day was raining a fair bit and the atmosphere was quite bright and sunny inside as soon as I walked into the church I was greeted friendly by the staff I then entered, I then entered um, on one of the main halls and noticed artworks placed on the walls by the side of the mics now these works were done I believe by Liz Gorman but I'll get on to that in a moment after about 10 minutes or so we got a sound blast called Transitions and you might have actually heard this before but anyway this sound blast was um, usually is done each time they open the Dragon Cafe and this was sort of set out by uh, Sarah Wheeler who is the creative director of the Dragon Cafe and she also has an alias but I can't, I think it's Thomas Tybus but that's just off the top of my head well anyway here's the actual sound blast now as I mentioned before that thing was heavily related to the gender transitions conversation that was taking place later that afternoon which I unfortunately ended up missing since I had to head over to um, to Carers UK which is also placed um, along Borough High Street or Borough Road. Now you can find out more about Sierra Wheeler aka Thomas Tybus from uh, the site mentalfightclub.com After the music um, Sierra introduced Chip from um, Southwark Health Watch uh, I don't know if you remember them. I've done a few videos on Healthwatch Southwark or Southwark Healthwatch. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way you put you, you sort of say it. But she um, began to sort of explain that Southwark Healthwatch latest joint project, 1000 Lives. Now, working with um, Southwark Health and the Wellbeing Board, Healthwatch Southwark in partnership with uh, Community Action Southwark, Southwark Council, Southwark Public Health, Southwark Clinical Commissioning Group, Safer Southwark Partnership and Southwark and Lambeth Integrated Care. All these groups are take, uh, basically talking to people um, who have used Southwark services to find out about their experience of using these services. Healthwatch Southwark has four priority, I, four priority um, areas they want to collect stories around uh, one of them being access to mental health services which is actually a good thing why Chip from Healthwatch Southwark was down at the Dragon Cafe because basically 
it's a mental health or mental fight club, and we have um, a lot of those uh, sort of you know, suffering mental health difficulties or or those with lived experience come down to try a lot of the activities at um, the Dragon Cafe. Well, anyway, so Chip was very happy to be invited by the Dragon Cafe to collect those stories, and at that. At that day, she was she had been promoting um, the 1,000 lives on stage and inviting people to come across to a table to offer stories about their health and their experiences on those health services. And people actually filled out the forms themselves, or just talked to her, and she um, ended up writing down notes if they if they felt there was some difficulty for them to fill the form. Well, after Chip presented. Um, Chip kindly helped me out by taking some shots of me while I presented and I guess I am returning the favour to Chip through this video by doing um, just a brief overview of the Hellfort Southwark uh, 1000 Lives project or joint um, project. Now my main aim at the Dragon Cafe was to speak about the slam to gops um, blog or slam to gops social media hub and how it's so important as um, a service user led blog but I would I would go to say um, it's a bit more than just that since many networks surround the blog as um, as our Facebook page Twitter channel and YouTube channel and it's expanding into Pinterest now I spoke about my roles at the, the Morsley um, South London and Morsley Foundation Trust as a carers rep and my role as a carers governor and also being on the involvement register and also what the blog consists of and how people can sign up to that blog. Next we had um, the singing, the next we had the singing group with Vivian Ellis and Viv Vivian Vivian discussed the songs and sessions that people wanted to do in the t wanted to do two weeks ago this being week three now Vivian gave an intro about the singing group and she then did the seating arrangements what I meant by the intro is that she presented what the singing group is all about now the first part of that group was um, a solo singing with the book Vivian had in front of her and here is Vivian um, doing the solo part and I'm afraid um, you'll have to excuse the noise since the cafe had so many members pouring in. A foolish thing was but a toy For the rain it rained every day With a hail of the wind and the rain Next, the group joined in for a practice session, and here is how how that group sounded. And again, I apologise for the background noise. After some discussions on vocal training and tips, the singing group moved on to sing a Portuguese freedom song, and here is part of that song.
Julian explained more about having um, the back straight when, when you're sitting on the chair and giving the vocal cords a chance. She also explained some exercises to help the vocal cords, that being yawning, but with um, a sliding down of the vocal cords, like, I'll give you an example, I saw a yawning, like going, ah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not that as good as, as what was shown at the, um, at that session in the Dragon Cafe, but for those who, who practice singing, they might get some idea of what I was trying to get at there. Now another exercise involved the singing, um, singing group members focusing on the as and the oo's sounds to prepare their vocal cords and also strengthen them. The group then moved on to a song that was requested out of the book Held by Vivian and they sang Let It Be by the Beatles. So here's a bit of that song. <laughs> the song Vivian then talked about the importance of breathing when practicing to sing and she showed the sessions that they have that they have done and what sessions are left now this can help with planning plus Vivian usually um, tends to ask the participants on what songs they would like to sing and asked us, and asked about the songs to be sung on special dates now the group finished up on their last song and here it is um, now it was the one that they sang. I noticed so much was going on in a dragon cafe and I began to panic thinking I'm about to miss some activity so I wandered off quickly to the second hall and met up with Phil and Dr. Diana E. Cox that the group they were holding um, which was the writing works group titled Time to Write which runs from 12 till 1.30 p.m. Now here people can explore creative writing skills Time to Write seems to be partnered with um, Network Arts. Now, Network Arts were, you know, were formed in 1996, offering creative services to people living actually in Lewisham who have severe and enduring mental health support needs. It is now part of the South East London Arts Network, otherwise known as CLAN which is a charitable organisation offering holistic arts and craft-based activities for people living in South East London who have mental health support needs. 
You can find out more about Celan at their site, which is www.networkartsolution or one word, .co .uk, and they also they also have um, a Facebook page, um, which I won't particularly well, I'll try and say www.facebook.com forward slash Celan UK, um, which is also shown on the YouTube version. If you can't manage to get access to that um, site link. So, what does Time to Read Group actually do? Well, first, they are shown a story and then they chat about the structure of that story. If they liked it, or if, if they understand its meaning or structure, as I've mentioned before. And then, next, after 20 minutes of writing, some, can show, some people can actually show what, uh, what they have written. Um, you don't have to show what you have written straight away, or if at all, if you feel a bit um, a bit nervous. But Dr. Diana showed me a booklet since the last edition which featured quite a few poems and stories. Diana was very friendly and wanted lots of people to come along to the group and she wanted um, lots more contacts since the group seems heavily musician based. The reading group has been at the Dragon Cafe as long as it has been open and they have done 52 groups so far um, up to the second Dragon Cafe year and by the way I think I'll actually read out one of the poems from the booklet Diana gave me now let's see um, let's pick out Odds and Evens by Phil Bard Odds and Evens Latin Seasons Reasons or High Treasons The Marble Games Sense with sentences, written on paper, dread within the head, the heavy metal lead, read and write upon the page, spoken from the Roman stage. And that was Odds and Evens by Phil Bard. Anyway, I like that poem and I'm glad that uh, Dr. Diana gave me that book there. It certainly felt relaxing just to read that one aloud. Well, after that, Cooper hovered back to the main hall to hear this lovely lady um, called Pinky from Craftmate present the group that was starting. Now, this group involved quilting, um, where they have hexagons, and there are shapes and designs added to the hexagons, which will eventually go on display in an exhibition. And this group is called Craftworks. I then headed over to the art space corner to investigate uh, the finished designs of the paint, draw and collage which is supervised by Lee Williams throughout the day. Now some people were actively um, working on more art and designs and this continued um, as I mentioned throughout the day. Next up was one of the main events where we had Liz Gorman who is a photographer and artist displaying some of her work called boxes, an archive of useful things not used. Now Liz talked about the cameraless photography work and answered questions about hoarding um, from Sarah, Sarah Wheeler that is the creative director of the um, Mental Fight Club. Now Liz then talked about how she investigated into the problem of hoarding and used this idea to make things into art from perhaps what people keep or hold dear. Now a bit more about Liz. Now she got her BA Photography at the University of Arts London Camberwell College of Arts. Um, she has done many exhibitions, one being the Spirit of Southwark done in 2013, another being the Spirit, Spirit of Southwark Disposable Camera Project and recent, recently she has been volunteering with the Mental Fight Club at the Dragon Cafe running photography workshops and producing exhibitions of the work made. Now you can check out her blog at lizgorman.org and I must remind you that dot is actually a D-O-T, it's not, it's not just um, a simple, just a, the symbol dot. So I say, so I say again, lizgorman.org, all one word, dot wordpress.com. There's also another blog from the Dragon Cafe's photographers group, which is Dragon Cafe photography.wordpress.com
worth checking out. So okay, um, so far we we have had a jammed packed afternoon at that Dragon Cafe uh, on the third of March, and I uh, went on to a, a break kindly donated by the Dragon Cafe. Um, the food was so good that I completely forgot to take a picture of the thing, which I usually do. But at this time, I decided to take a peek into the lovely, into where this lovely food comes from. Now I got into the kitchen. Um, Sarah actually invited me there to quickly see how busy the staff were and how delicious the, um, the food that was provided and I, even though I didn't stay too long there since the staff was very you know very busy they're also very friendly and I can see why some actually volunteer because the atmosphere is so friendly after my break I went out to try uh, and catch another activity and this was um, the playing with purpose group this group was led by Amanda, um, which aims to explore how play, games, and fun improvised scenes can actually help people understand themselves better. And I think that's quite a good idea. I wish I had actually explored this group further, but at the time, I had rushed from the, um, the Healthport Southwark section of the room where Chip was busy collecting stories for the 1000 Lives project. Chip mentioned that she usually asks some questions um, in this theme, and these questions are um, basically she would ask about medication, and then she would ask perhaps how long um, someone has been on medication, and have they spoken to their doctor about this medication, and do they have actually a choice of the medication, and so on. So these were very important questions when you're asking someone about the services sometimes people just don't think about what they receive from the services they don't actually comment or question about these things and it's so important because sometimes what people say or perhaps what they comment on or what even sometimes when they even want to complain it affects the quality of the services as I went back to the main hall to hear some music I spoke to the sound controller Mick Hobbs about his role who he enjoyed very much. I asked him about uh, the music that he was playing and he mentioned that he's complimenting the dance group that is on stage. Now the dance group run by Ariella Villiano, um, I think I've got, I hope I've got her name right, and, and they were actually practicing um, a number of dance moves. I enjoyed the, the Latin dance that they were doing. Well, I think that's what it was called. I could not participate of course because in one hand I was actually typing on my tablet and in the other hand I was actually um, taking pictures. At around 3pm uh, till 4pm I got a chance to sit in the wisdom group with Sarah Wheeler and TT um, to discuss the meaning of wisdom. Now this wisdom group is a discussion and reflection of virtues of learning growing and aging and we discussed the link on what does philosophy have to do with wisdom and also what does wisdom mean to us now someone in the group mentioned that on a basic level um, she was fond of the works of um, a young philosopher I've forgotten his name unfortunately he was an atheist and he spoke about keeping an open mind I actually uh, managed to contribute to this group of that um, philosophy can be too ingrained in convincing people what is right and what is wrong. And what it should be about is opening our minds, although not too much. Um, I feel philosophy's link from wisdom is where you can follow your own journey. We also discussed the link between wisdom and art. And someone mentioned that philosophy needs to be linked to ourselves. We are, however, soft, vulnerable creatures, and it's not always about our material gain. Another person feels that philosophy seems to be too academic. Um, not sure how wisdom actually fits in. So many contradictions, but then Sarah Wheeler actually felt that this was actually quite right. She felt that this was a paradox, which is the main part of philosophy. Another person mentioned that mental health is rather chosen or um, uh, an isolated life. 
Perhaps listen to Sarah um, speak about wisdom from this group. Um, and I suppose I'm interested because wisdom isn't often talked about in modern day life. It's not something that is. There is a it is kind of rated, but it's not something that we aspire to. It, in my view, we aspire to knowledge and information and science. But what is the difference? For a start of ten between knowledge and wisdom, what is the defining characteristic of wisdom? That's what interests me. Sheridan spoke about how, when someone recovered from a devastating mental health problem and asked about life's meaning and lessons, they would repeatedly say about mental health, "I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know." Maybe this is an important start to the journey of wisdom. Think about that for a second. After expressing our thoughts and sharing ideas in the wisdom group, I then headed off to another quick break and then relaxed over at the reading group table, and that group being called Reading Works. And I noticed Dr. Diana was part of um, part of the group as a member at this time, and the person leading this group was Carrie. Um, the whole point of this group was, um, which is open to anyone, is to explore transitional themes in poetry and prose. Notice the word transitional. I did not read myself and just relaxed listening to others read from their books. Each person took turns to read to that group and it felt like someone was actually reading me a story. The voices were soothing, especially Carrie's voice and Dr. Diana. I then went over to keep Chip from Southwark Health Watch company and we chatted for a bit. Over the other side of the room, I could see a group practicing Tai Chi um, with Gao, the, uh, the Tai Chi master from the Confucius Institute. Usually this is done outside, um, but because of the persistently um, rainy weather, there was space inside for Tai Chi practice. As I looked around the, around the hall, um, I, I saw a technician um, very friendly technician, um, I think her name's Max, working on some equipment. And I spoke to her for a bit and watched her as she, uh, she was quickly fixing and repairing some items with such amazing skill. And I noticed she seemed rather free-spirited because ever since I've come to the Dragon Cafe uh, for quite a few months, I noticed she walked barefoot around the place and I found that quite nice. When I turned around to check out some leaflets at the information store, there were so many notices and posters and leaflets I was not sure which one to pick. Most were on mental health support in Southwark, and there were others that pointed to national groups um, around the country. I was quite pleased to see some of the Sam Twigops cards on the store. Eventually I wandered off again and bumped into Liz, and she was busy working away on the PhotoWorks group section. Now she hardly noticed me much, but was pleased um, that I was taking some photos, which is quite weird considering she is the one who takes all these pictures and all these photos. Now this group is again open to members and is from 5 until 6. Liz does different projects at this group and the current one looks into the presentation of writing with light project and I think this was linked to the presentation that she was um, speaking about on stage. Unfortunately, um, my time was running out at the cafe, but before I left, of course, um, a sight of quite a few of the public and those with lived experiences sitting on chairs to attend the mindfulness course with Tamara Russell. Now, the course runs for 12 weeks, but you can join any time. Usually I attend this group, but this time I was watching others meditate, which is perhaps what the, the main aim of this group, meditating and learning to reflect on stilling one's mind, hence the mental health or mental fight um, training in this mental fight cafe. Now I watched as Tamara instructed people in a meditation exercise on how they can use their breaths to take the opportunity 
to drop their body temperature or perhaps drop their body in some sense how they listened carefully as um, she mentioned for them to be aware of sitting and how they sit on that chair it was great to see how Tamara reminded people to focus on a point that makes them feel safe and being here in the present which is very important for meditation plus getting some um, to be aware of sensations around the body perhaps the foot quietly instructed that everything must be for the first time never feel meditation is a chore I smiled when um, Tamara said that it's natural for the mind to wonder and as soon as she said that I smiled even more when she said well oops there goes the mind wandering again but it's okay for the mind to wonder but the important thing is if we know that the mind has just began to wander slowly I began to notice that I was actually hearing some soft meditation music and there is actually going to be an audio recording of that meditation session actually going online but I'm, I'm afraid I need to find a site so I can try and point to it and I haven't come across that site as yet Tomorrow I then asked if there are any comments or observation of that short exercise and she also mentioned that there should be a line between meditating and staying awake so we do not fall asleep but as you know this can be quite a struggle for beginners I guess well anyway um, my time at the Dragon Cafe was coming to an end and I was quite a little bit sad to go. I wanted to capture so much more activities and there was a lot that was happening throughout that throughout the rest of the day. I really wanted to stay for the uh, transition conversation but the best part of being at the cafe is how the day rushed off so quickly, how the time passed even though I was actually working and rushing from activity to group to to groups and to different sections I enjoyed capturing the moment and engaging with others being in their world without wanting anything in return only to show Southwark and others in different boroughs the importance of having a place to go especially if you're suffering mental health difficulties the highlight of Dragon Cafe is re it reduces isolation you're not compelled to join a group you can just sit and watch but out there I know there are those who are alone or glued to the TV like that like their life is ebbing away it's so important society notices these people and it's so important that there is a place for them to go I'd like just to thank guys and Thomas's charity and the Morsley charity who make this place possible with their funding and I'd also like to thank all those um, at the Dragon Cafe, st um, at the Dragon Cafe being the staff past and present who have contributed to running the cafe. Most of all, I would like to thank those who managed to attend the Dragon Cafe to increase their mental stamina, and thanks for those who are actually watching. Keep up the mental fight. Till next time.